Hi again, we're going to continue um, working our way through the phaser tutorial and uh, where we left off before we had created the platform, right? So let's talk a little bit about the platform and then we'll add the player, right? So when we created this function create platforms, you know, we call the method down here and you know we do all these things to create a platform but but what actually creates the platform and what happens here right well on the first line we created a new physics static group right so we said this dot physics add so we're going to add something to the physics system right when we called add up here we added an object to the display list and it was displayed directly when we add something to physics we actually add it to the physics system and then it works with um, other physics objects so they can collide and and check for collisions right these objects don't check for collisions or collide or show any physical interaction um, a static group is a group of objects that are static in the physics system they they don't move so imagine like, you know, if you had a, a ball, you know, you could kick it around. So that's a dynamic object, right? But the ground that you're running on and you're kicking the ball and it's bouncing off of the ground or a table or the wall, those are all static objects. They don't move, right? So the platforms in our game are going to be static objects, like they won't move. Other objects can run into them, but they can't knock them aside or, or you know, um, or move them in any way, right? But but other objects will bounce off of them, okay? And and we're going to create more than one static object, and so Phaser gives us a, a system called static group, and so we can add objects to the group, right? So uh, we're going to call that group platforms. So this creates the group here, and then we assign it to a, a class property called, uh, or a, you know, a, 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 a property variable called platforms, right, with the equal sign here. And then on the next line, we'll create the platforms, right? So we're gonna call um, create, and uh, we're gonna create the ground. And this ground object, if we look at it over here in our list of assets, because we got it here, you know, ground is, you know, assets platform PNG. So it's this file right here. It's just a little rectangle, right? And if we look at the, the project in the browser, you can see these rectangles look like that one that we just saw over here, but um, but this one at the bottom is like a lot bigger, right? So the, um, the game right here does this, right? This first one right here is the one that we see at the bottom of the screen. We say platforms.create a new static object we're going to position it at 400x, 568y, um, and then we're gonna use ground, like that image that we use the key name up here, we're gonna use that as the object, right? And then what we did is we said, hey, let's set the scale of this object to two. So this one is gonna be two times as big as its original asset, okay? And then we have to call refresh body, this is a little technical, but the, every physics object has a physics body attached to it. And I'm guessing in the system that if you set the scale of something, it doesn't necessarily um, change the physics body. So when an object is created, it must generate the physics body and match the artwork. And so if you call set scale, we're changing the size of the artwork, but we need to also call refresh body to make sure that the physics engine recognizes the, the new size of the body, right? We'll come back to that, and you know what we can do is we can use the, um, we can, I think we can use debug to test that. I think this draws outlines around all the physics objects so we can see what the body is, and maybe we'll come back and test that later. Okay, but anyway, so this is the ground plane, and then you saw there's, there's three other um, platforms here, right? And that's the three here. So we're going to create a platform at 600, 400, create another one at 50, 250, and another one at 750, uh, 220, right? And that creates the, the three extra platforms, and the one at the bottom is, is the larger one, okay? So anyway, so that's what ha what's happening there. Let's go back to the tutorial, and what we'd like to do is move on to platforms. So this page right here, you can read this, and it talks about um, everything that I just said, right? And it probably adds a little more information. Might as well read that. And I'm gonna move on to the next one here, which is where we add the player, right? So for the player, it's a similar process and the player has a few pieces of code that go with it. So I'm gonna grab this block of code here 
and uh, copy it and I'm going to paste it into my, my code here and then we'll go over it line by line. I'm going to add a new function. So I'll go to the bottom here right below create platform but before the closing curly brace and I'll add create player. So this is kind of nice for us to organize our code, right? So this is all the code here is dealing with creating the platforms and the code here will be dealing with creating the player. I'm going to format this so it looks a little better. Okay, there that's looking pretty good. And then what we'll do in order to run the code here, we'll have to call the method. So in create, I'm going to say this dot create player. Oh, it looks like I misspelled this too. So let's fix the spelling there and I'll have to fix it down here also. There we go, right? Okay. So let's go over this line by line. So we're going to call you know, create's going to get called automatically after we preload all our assets. We're going to call create platform. It'll run all the code here. Then it'll call create player and run all the code here. Okay, so what happens in create player? Well, here we would be creating a new physics sprite that will be a global variable. And we don't want this to be a global variable. We want it to be owned by the game instance. So we'll put this in front of here. And we'll need to do that for all of the um, player variables. So let's just fix that. And I don't think there are any more down here. Yeah, I think that's pretty good, right? Okay, so what's happening here? So we've got this.player. So here we're going to make another physics object. So we say this.physics. So the physics object, objects, remember, they can collide and they show physical interactions with other physics objects. So we'll make a new physics object. We'll add and then we'll say sprite. So sprites are like animated objects and you can you can animate them, you can put textures on them, um, you can give, give them a sprite sheet. And so we can do a little more with this. These static objects don't move. The physics object that's a sprite can actually move. So it can be knocked around. So if it runs into a platform, it'll land on the platform and it can jump off the platform and we can move it around with the, uh, with the, uh, the, the arrow keys or something, right? So we're going to position it at 100, 450, and it's going to use the dude image, which is up here, right? It's a sprite sheet. So this is the name. So we're using that guy. And then we're going to say this dot player set bounce. So since this is a physics object, it has like physical properties. One of those is is its bounciness, right? Like how, you know, is it rubber or is it like a bowling ball, right? You know, so <laughs> it's hard to describe, but, you know, physical objects have like elasticity, right? And this is what's setting it. We've set it to point two. We can change that number and you can see what happens in the world. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, this dot player set collide world bounds to true. So this means that um, if the player hits the edge of the world, we'll think of it as the edge of the um, the game, right? The edges of the game, the box that surrounds the game. If it hits the edges, it will collide with them, like it'll stop as if the edges were solid. Okay, otherwise it would just fall off the bottom of the screen. These other three things down here are um, animations that we're creating, and we're giving them a key. We're not actually using them yet, but we'll use them later. So we create an animation that's going to work with the player. This one's called left, and it will animate the player when it moves to the left. And this one down here will create an animation called turn. So when the player moves from left to the left and then turns and, and goes to the right, it'll do this animation. And then this one down here creates an animation for the player when it's moving to the right. Okay, And uh, we'll get more into this later, but essentially we're saying which frames the, the player should use when it's doing this animation. So it says animation generate frame numbers for the dude, start at 0 and end at 3 and use a frame rate of 10. So that means show these at 10 frames per second and repeat negative one, okay? So that means repeat forever, right? And if I look at the dude image again, you can see this has a bunch of pictures in it, right? So if we just said um, animate starting at zero and end at three, it's really, it's like this image here, one, two, three, four. So zero, one, two, three. Right? And this is kind of a running image going to the left. So it'll cycle between these, you know, from this image to this one, to this one, to this one, and then do it again, right? And if we look at the, um, the right animation, we can see that it says start on frame five, end on frame eight. 
right? Frame rate of 10, that's how fast the frames will cycle. Cycle forever, so if we're moving to the right, then if we look at the dude, we should see zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then it's gonna cycle from five to eight. So five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight, right? And it'll cycle between these images from here all the way across and then do it again, okay? So anyway, so there's our dude. Let's uh, save this and see if it's if we did that right. Oh, there we go, right? So you can see the dude kind of falls, right? So if I refresh, you can see it. We, we placed it here, but it fell, and it fell through the platforms because we didn't tell it to collide with the platforms yet, but we did tell it to collide with the edge of the world. So we saw it hit the bottom here, right? And then we saw it has a little bounce to it, right? Okay, and that's the bounce. Um, you know, and you, you could play with this too. You could change the number here. Like if I say, let's make that a bounce of 0.8, and then I watch, oh, it's got a much higher bounce, right? It's really more rubbery, okay? Um, I'm gonna go put that back to 0.2, but you know, we can edit this later, okay? So anyway, so that's, that's getting pretty far there. Um, we got the player working. Um, let's scroll down. We'll do one more action here, right? So we need to set up the physics sprite, okay? So um, this explains about, you know, the physics. I guess we already talked about that. And uh, this talks about the animation. Yeah, so anyway, I guess that's pretty good here. And we'll, we'll continue in the next video.